Halt! Incoming! That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are, chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. 
That's as much of the story as you need to hear. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the Vale bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me, and I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. Edgewater Cemetery's got corpses aplenty. Enough for a generation's worth of crops. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody'd search out those data pads for me. Sure, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much use to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. Yeah, I know. Thought's been weighing on me. Spacer's choice could scupper the whole town unless we all pull together somehow. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adelaide's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater and... I'm as good as dead to her. Are you sure about this? If we head back to Edgewater on our own, Adelaide won't come with us. She'll stay here and curse us till the end of her days. You know where to find me. Marauders can't see us in the dark. Wild canids, on the other hand. The matter's been weighing on me. I'm staying put until I know what's become of Zoe. Don't want that question haunting me all the way back to the cannery.
This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have done my best for this town. Her son got sick with plague a couple years back. Company never gave us enough medication to treat the whole town. So I had to choose, you see, Adelaide's child or someone else's. She's never forgiven me. I don't expect she ever will. But I did. I made the decision. I am responsible for it. And I must shoulder the burden. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer, but it is my home. Unless you can demonstrate to me that we are helpless without her. I see no reason why I should stand down.
You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crops. She's what this town needs. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. Look at that. The snakes come back. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. 
We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. This don't put us on even footing, you understand. But it is a start. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. One of us want to go see what happened?
Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. 
I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I... Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. 
What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal.
Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. 
What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely, flying about on his own? Top secret orbital lab. Destination reached the groundbreaker. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else?